Well friends, you already know what this video is about. You leave your questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. If your question isn't featured in this video, don't worry, it might be in the next one. I was thinking of making a couple of videos on Baki theories. If you like a video about theories of the Baki series would be interesting. Leave a theory you know in the comment box, and we will discuss it in a future video. Without further ado, let's dive into the first question. Honey, I'm home. What if another member of the Hanma family appears? Yujiro mentioned that he likely has several children spread around the world. However, having Hanma blood doesn't ensure these kids are born with fighting skills. For example, Jack has Yujiro's blood, but he only became stronger through chemicals since he never saw any results from his natural training. This suggests that if there are more of Yujiro's children out there, it's likely that most won't become as formidable a fighter as Baki. Many may not even know they are children of the Yujiro, and if they exist, they probably lead an ordinary life far from the fights. Let's imagine for a moment that a new son of Yujiro appears. In my opinion, this character should have aspirations different from those of Baki and Jack to get to know the ogre. While Baki and Jack long to defeat Yujiro as an act of revenge for the atrocities he committed against their mothers, this hypothetical new son should have different reasons. It would be fascinating if, instead of seeking revenge, this fighter wanted to earn the esteem and approval of his father. Instead of challenging Yujiro, he might want to face off against Baki and Jack to protect the ogre from them. Although Yujiro probably wouldn't like the idea of being protected. In previous episodes, we've seen how he took in a young fighter and trained him during the underground arena tournament. Based on this precedent, it wouldn't be far-fetched to think that Yujiro could accept this new Hanma and take him under his wing. How would you like a plot involving the appearance of a new son of Yujiro to unfold? I'd like to hear your thoughts and how you would integrate this new protagonist into Baki's narrative. How did Dopo end up inside the dinosaur statue? The scene was extremely comical, and looking for a logical explanation would be futile. However, if I had to give an answer, I'd say that apart from mastering martial arts, Dopo also knows some magic tricks. It would be fun to think that Dopo was inside that statue from the moment it was made. Has Dopo been nerfed over time? The truth is that characters like Dopo are nerfed when the plot demands it. For example, when Ala Jr. appeared, Dopo's defeat served to show us that Jr. posed a real threat to Baki. This strategy is repeated in many other series as every time a new character is introduced, some protagonists are used to demonstrate the new guy's power. I don't think Dopo has been nerfed. Those who read the manga know he has continued to get stronger and remains one of the most significant fighters in the Baki series. However, Baki and other characters like Yujiro have become so powerful that Dopo isn't on their level anymore. By now, his son Katsumi has surpassed him in terms of skills. Remember, Katsumi now possesses Retsu's arm, which allows him to use Chinese Kenpo, making him a very well-rounded fighter. Some argue that after losing his right eye, Dopo became weak. Although I don't agree with this statement, it's true that by losing that eye, he also lost the ability to use his ultimate defensive technique. Nevertheless, Dopo continues to grow stronger and remains one of the most prominent fighters in the underground arena. How strong is General Stratum? Compared to the power levels of other fighters, Stratum would be considered weak. However, compared to the average human, Stratum is exceptionally strong. In a manga episode, he demonstrated a wide mastery of martial arts, including Judo. It is unlikely that Stratum, being a friend of the ogre, is a weak guy without remarkable physical skills. In fact, Yujiro annually challenges into a fight, and if Stratum manages to entertain him, their friendship is extended for another year. I would say Stratum is a few levels below men like Chiharu Shiba, but he is still an outstanding fighter. What if Pickle fights Oliva Biscuit? Although this fight did not take place, it is likely that Pickle would have emerged victorious. Oliva has a hand-to-hand -hand fighting style, which wouldn't work against the caveman. Mr. Unchained relies solely on his raw strength to win a fight, and as we've already seen in terms of brute strength, Pickle was able to briefly overpower Yujiro, making it clear who would win the fight. Biscuit often underestimates his opponents, so it's likely that Pickle would surprise him with a powerful strike, just like he did with Baki, quickly defeating Mr. Unchained. Oliva's only advantage would be that, due to the hardness of his muscles, Pickle would have a hard time trying to bite him with his fangs. In short, if Baki could not defeat Pickle using force alone, it is unlikely that Oliva can. The real question is, why didn't they ask Oliva Biscuit to escort Pickle to Japan? It's possible they proposed it to him, but Oliva turned down the offer for various reasons. Not much time had passed since his fight against Baki, and he likely hadn't recovered from his loss. He's a very proud fighter, 
so perhaps that pride prevented him from showing up until he felt ready for a rematch. We already know the mindset of the fighters in Baki, so unlike Jack, don't hesitate to ask for a rematch right after a loss. However others, like Oliva Biscuit, take more time to reflect before making the same mistake again. Who would win, Dopo or Haneyama? It's one of the fights we haven't seen in the series yet. Personally, I'd lean towards Haneyama due to his endurance and staggering brute strength. Dopo would only stand a chance if he targeted a vital point to knock him out, but it's unlikely he'd succeed. Haneyama is like a tower of muscle and bone. He's a very hard guy to take down. So far, only Yujiro has managed to beat him into unconsciousness with a single blow. With the current versions of the manga, I doubt Dopo could defeat him with just his martial arts. How old is Yujiro? The exact age of Yujiro is a bit unclear due to some inconsistencies in the series. But knowing he was 16 during the war, and that he fathered Baki at around 20, we can add Baki's current age to estimate Yujiro's age. In the Baki Do manga, Baki is about 18. This suggests that Yujiro might be around 38 or 39 years old. Interestingly, Yujiro isn't as old as some might think. In fact, Oliva Biscuit is actually older. When Biscuit first appeared in that a special episode of the animated series, he was already known as the strongest man in America, meaning he could be around a decade older than Yujiro. These are just estimates because, as I mentioned, the series has shown some inconsistencies throughout its 30-year history. This may be due to Ithagaki trying to align his story with the real-world timeline. In any case, I invite you to share your opinion in the comments. How strong will Katsumi become after receiving Retsu's arm? He's expected to be incredibly strong, perhaps even more than Dopo. However, it's still early days since he got Retsu's arm, so we're yet to see how his martial arts abilities and his proficiency in Chinese Kenpo evolve. If he masters the use of that arm, he will certainly be a force to be reckoned with, but for now we just have to wait. In his most recent match in the underground arena, we could see he hasn't fully harnessed his new arm's power, indicating he still has progress to make. Why can't Jack use the demon back? Yujiro himself gave an explanation. He stated that Jack's bloodline isn't pure, suggesting that Jack might not be able to activate the demon back, since his blood doesn't have the same properties as Baki's. Another answer is that the author of the series never intended to give Jack this particular ability. Looking at it from Jack's point of view, he doesn't really want to have any ties to Yujiro. Using the demon back would mean making use of his father's power, something he would probably see as humiliating. He's focused on defeating Yujiro on his own, without relying on Hamma blood. Personally, I doubt we'll see Jack activate the demon back at some point. Did the creator of the series not know what to do with Musashi? It's an interesting question. Many of us who followed that series have wondered why Itagaki chose that particular ending for this character. In the final fight against him, it wasn't Baki who defeated him. Instead, it was Mitsunari's sister who intervened during the fight, taking over Masashi's soul with her mediumistic abilities. The outcome felt anticlimactic and let down a lot of fans. We were anticipating an epic showdown between Baki and Masashi, but what unfolded felt more like a playful sparing session to them. I began to think that maybe this wasn't the planned ending for the iconic samurai. Moreover, Masashi isn't truly gone. His body is preserved cryogenically and could be revived if someone capable of summoning souls comes along. I believe that the Gaki didn't want to conclude this character's arc definitively and left the door open to potentially bring him back in the future. I personally love to see Musashi as the ultimate antagonist. Although he may appear to be a friendly man, in reality, he is a ruthless man who has become cold-blooded after years of living in the midst of war. The thought of an unleashed Musashi is undeniably an intriguing one. It would be great if someone revived him, and upon awakening, he swore revenge against Baki and the others. If this were to happen, I'd like to see the samurai fighting at his full power from the start. The idea of seeing a totally ruthless Musashi in action is undeniably exciting. Is Pickle the first Hanma? There's no evidence directly linking Pickle to the Hanma family. But if we look from an evolutionary standpoint, Pickle could be seen as an ancestor of humanity, implying he might be a distant predecessor of both Baki and all other humans given that he was one of the first humans to exist. It's intriguing that we haven't seen any other members of Pickle's family anywhere in the manga. This leads me to speculate that perhaps Pickle was the weakest of his family, and that is why he was always alone. Perhaps others of his kind banished him for being so weak and forced him to face a world dominated by dinosaurs. If Pickle was the only one of his kind, I wonder how human evolution carried on, given that Pickle was supposedly frozen 
when the meteor that ended the dinosaurs hit the Earth. Having said that, Pickle's very existence introduces certain inconsistencies in the plot. However, considering we're talking about Baki, it is better not to look for more realistic answers. Anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the topics discussed in this video. Share your theories in the comment section, and I'll be reading them. And well friends, thanks for watching the video, don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. I hope you have a nice day or night. See you soon.